track wrestling here in Fresno, California at Women's Freestyle World Team Training Camp. Got a junior world team practice going on in the background here with Fresno State coach Troy Steiner. Year one in the books after the program, revival, huge crowds coming out time and time again for you guys. Did, did that surprise you in any way, shape, or form that you um, got the attendance you did? I don't know if it surprised me. I, th I think I knew this valley was really rich in wrestling and, and wanted to score back. You know, I, was, I guess I was surprised maybe that they kept coming back because we didn't give them a whole lot to cheer about. But, um, but I, I expect big crowds and I, I, I think there will be big crowds. And I, I've said it when I first got here from day one that I told people we need them in the stands. You know, you wanted a program here. We, they fought to bring it back and now they got to support it. You know, and uh, the best way to do that is get your butts in the seats. You, know? uh, you got a plan that's is built towards gradual growth here in terms of roster size, scholarship, stuff like that. What will be different about year two? Well, I think uh, the biggest difference I'll see in the room is we'll have guys competing for the spots. And that will ultimately, or just because of that, you're going to have more competition in there to, to, to be in that starting lineup. And that's always a good thing. And uh, I, I expect a very competitive group out there. And, um, you know, they, people can say we're young and all that. Well, there's young guys doing great things in the sport, and we don't have to wait. Um, it's a, but it's a, we got to get that belief behind us as well. And, you know, that's going to take a, probably a little bit of time, a little bit of success, and, and hopefully we can get that going early and, and continue to build from it. Do you have everything you need here? Is there anything that, that you still need to get to, in place? To, to develop Fresno State into a perennial winner? Oh, I don't, I mean, I think we got what we, we have what we need. We just need a little time. I think we've got a lot of good things in place. You know, we're still in our temporary facility, as you, you've seen here, and um, it'll be nice when we have our room, but is this holding us back? I don't think so. You know, I, I think we have everything we need. It's just we need, we just need a little more time to develop, and we need uh, competition in the room, and that to continually come, and grow and uh, and then just we need to keep adding the right people to it and um, I think I think it's we got a good thing going. A couple new programs coming in as well with uh, uh, Mark Cody um, out at uh, uh, Presbyterian. Out of Presbyterian out in South Carolina and then Neil Ayersman at Little Rock. Have they leaned on you at all uh, or have you reached Neil, out to them? To... Neil has actually reached out and and we've talked some, and we, I saw him at the final acts, and we visited some. And he said he may come out this year to just uh, pick, pick our brains a little bit. And I'll gladly help as much as I can. You know, I'm, I did the same thing. I reached out to other people and talked to them, and and uh, so it's yeah, I'll share as much as I can. We need as many programs in this country and as strong programs we can have. And if I can help in some way, um, I'll gladly help. What, what were the biggest challenges of? The, the transition from not having a team, you're recruiting, you don't have a schedule, um, you're not in the corner yeah. week after week, uh, to going to year one, or year zero to year one, I guess is what you might might call it. Well, I was excited for that point to come, you know, I'm, but I still knew we need, didn't have everything in place that we needed to, and we weren't going to have the, the competition in the room. so. Going into the year knowing that you're, you know, it's, it's probably not going to be a real successful year in, in terms of wins and losses. But uh, I thought we had successes and you had, to, you had to find other ways or other things to see success and see growth and, and development. And that's the, the biggest thing I look for. But, yeah, you, you're going into it. But, you know, I'm never going to tell these guys that they don't, they can't win and they can't have success because they're doing the right things in the room and it, we can get there you know and there's a learning curve with everything and myself included jumping into a, my first head coaching job and into a program that was had nothing here really put together so it was I had a learning curve as much as probably some of these young guys did you know even though I've been in the sport for a long time and I've been 
around some great coaches, it's still a different role when you step into the head job. What was the, the biggest difference? Well, I think the learning to delegate, you know, and then learning to really trust in my assistants to get some of the work done and, and collaborating with them to, to what needs to get done. You know, it's not, I had certain visions, but, you know, I, I wanted to hear what they had to see what we can make the best thing possible because we're, it's that everywhere I've coached, it's been a little different setting, uh, little different things you have to do probably to have success. And uh, so you want everyone's advice. And that's why I brought them here. I didn't bring them here just to be puppets underneath me. I don't want that. I want guys that are strong enough, can stand up and tell me what they feel is right. And in the end, I'm gonna have to make the decision, but um, but I, I, I sure wanted that, that collaboration with them. How much of your coaching philosophy, coaching style, has been formed by what you learned under Gable at Iowa? Oh, I think a lot. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, gave me so many opportunities as a coach and as a wrestler that I'd be stupid if I didn't look back at in those times. But again, it's a different place. It's so you can take some of it and uh, and I'll, I'll, probably my philosophy is very similar, but there's different things and, and, and in today's society compared to when I was there, it's, it's different. So I, you can definitely take some of it and I definitely have. And, um, I'll always look back to those years and draw from it, but it's uh, you have to continue to evolve as a coach as well. Valley RTC, two guys in Final X uh, with Joe Cologne and Jason Chamberlain. Didn't make the world teams, but uh, right there um, in terms of giving your program more visibility and things like that. Uh, how much does that help your college program? Well, it was a big step, I think, for our program. And uh, like I told our guys on our team, is uh, you know those guys didn't get there by themselves. It was you guys working with them and being partner a partner for them and pushing them during this this year that helped them get to that point. And um, and some of the structure we had put in place with their training and consistency. And but I I, I want them to feed off of it because. It showed them, I think, that things are going in the right direction. There's a lot of good things happening, and they just got to kind of stay the course and, and continue to work. And t things will happen, and the good things will happen. But you, it's not going to happen overnight, and you got to continually, every day you wake up and step out of bed, you better be ready to push and then continually grow and move forward. Because if you don't, you're going to get passed up very quick. So. 10, 15 years ago, it used to be commonplace that guys training to make world and Olympic teams or on college staffs. It's not so common anymore. What are the challenges that uh, that they confront there, and, and also what are maybe some of the benefits that they get out of it? Well, I'm sure some of the, you know, there is some times that I need them a little bit more than others, and I try to. I mean, we sit down. I sit down with their schedule, their competition schedule, their training schedule. We look at all that. And I'll try to plug them in as much as I can when they're down or their down times, and and I know during it when they're ge really getting ready for competition that last month out, and, and uh, that I'm gonna back off them and let them focus on what they their dream, what they're chasing, and uh, so I think you know I, I just gotta be very aware of what their schedule is, and then uh, but I think it helps them in a way too. I mean they're in here telling guys and helping guys and preaching to guys what they want to see out of them uh, as a, as athletes under them. And so when they're telling guys that and they step out on the mat, you got to talk, the, if you talk the talk, you, gotta, you have to live it too. And um, I think it helps them because it gives, it, it forces them and holds them accountable to what they're preaching every day. So I think it's a good thing. And I would, I think when I stepped out of college and I, w I stayed at Iowa for a couple years and I was just training and uh, I was going crazy. I needed more, I wanted more, I wanted to be a part of a program where I was helping individuals and I felt better about myself and I think my wrestling was the same way and um, I think that's what's helped a little bit, what's helped Jason and, and Joe get to the level that they reached this year and you know I, it, it was a heartbreaker for them not to get on that team but They'll be back, and how they handle it. And, um, I just told both of them, and it's 
they got to look at how they're handling this thing because they got a whole team out here in Fresno that are, are watching them. And, uh, and what are they going to do? Are they going to go out for the deep end or are they going to get back to work and, and just get back to it and continually grow and, and get ready for the next opportunity ahead of them? That's all they can do. Why was the Big 12, why was and why is it a good, a good fit for Fresno State? I feel it's, a, it's a, being, us being tied to the Big 12, is it's a lifeline for us. It's a lifeline, not, not, not for Fresno State, I think it's for the West in wrestling. And I think with having these teams come out here every year, or every other year, or every three years, whatever the rotation is, it only helps the West in wrestling. And because they're not just going to wrestle us, they're going to pick up another team or maybe two when they come out. And I, if we if we stayed at the Pac-12, I just felt we isolated ourselves again out here on the West. And I think with being tied to the Big 12, it's uh, it gets teams and some of those perennial powers out here. And uh, it's only going to help us grow and adjust and adapt to their level. And um, I think it'll help everyone out here. Obviously, the crowds show that there's a, a thirst for wrestling out here. And you've got the top high school programs out here in Clovis. Uh, are we going to see more big time events out here? Yeah, in the future? I, I hope so. I'm in a order right now. I know USA Wrestling is interested in holding the final acts. I know we're going to put in a big a bid for the Big 12 championships. You know, we want we want to we want wrestling to come out here, and I think it needs to come out. Unless we're going to look to make this a regional sport, we got to get some events out west, or else it's going to become a regional sport. And um, I don't think anyone wants that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it and uh, excited and hoping to be a part of it and hoping we have guys that are a part of it too. You know, it's not just about holding the events. I want guys that are competing and, and um, four championships and four spots on the world team and, and we're looking to do that. Your brother's out here somewhere. Uh, he's wearing USA Wrestling gear. You're wearing Fresno State apparel, so it makes it easy to tell you to each of you apart today. But uh, how often do you get mistaken? Yeah, quite a bit, especially with the junior group, because he hasn't been around them a whole lot himself, and I definitely haven't been around the, the junior women. And so they they get probably more confused. The senior women have been around them enough where they know. But we're gonna we're gonna test their knowledge or their how, how witty they are, and uh, we're gonna change it up. I'm gonna put some USA gear on. And he's gonna put some Fresno gear on later this week, and we'll we'll, we'll just see how smart they are. <laughs> You're out there helping though today with with you know the the women's freestyle senior team. He's out uh, rolling around with one of your guys. How invested do you feel in what's going on in the women's program? Oh, I want to help as much as I can. You know, I think it's uh, important for for the women's program to help as much as I can, and and uh, not that I have all the answers, but just to be another voice for them and another set of eyes. And I think it's also just important for the sport. You know, and then. I know Terry's invested in our program too. He'll help as much as he can. You know, it's just our our time is limited with each other's program. So when we have an opportunity like this, we're going to take full advantage of it. I love the story about when he started looking into this job, and he was looking for somebody just to give him, just to tell him what he wanted to hear, maybe, and in, in that. Uh, that you shouldn't look at this job. You should try to get back into college wrestling, and, and you were one of the devil's advocates for him. You ever think of stuff like that? Think back to that with, with what he's accomplished with the, this women's program? Well, I, I remember that. I remember where I was when he called and asked me, and we were both coaching at Wisconsin, and, and I was at home at the time I was remodeling my house, and. Um, and he called me up and said he just talked to Rich and he asked him to come out there, out to Colorado for the U.S. women's position. And he, he's, he said, I'd just been throwing a curveball. And then I asked him why and he told me and I said, look into it. You know, you can always say no, look into it. And then he, the more he looked into it, he realized that the, the top girls at the time had the same dreams and aspirations he had. So why? He, is he coaching for himself, or is he really coaching to try to help someone? You know, and that's that's what, ultimately what you're in it for, you know, to try to help people uh, achieve some of those dreams that you never got to, or maybe some that you did get to. But um, 
but that's what you're in it for. You're here to help people. And uh, so I knew if he was going to do it, he was going to jump in. But but yeah, it was. I mean, it was. It's been a growing experience for both of us, for him for sure, and even the, from the first time I went to camp, I remember feeling a little awkward wrestling a girl, and and he said, "Ah, you got to get over it." He, they're so far past that. It's it's you. You got to get over it. It's your mindset. You know, which is very true, you know, just that, I think it's just the ignorance you have, and the, right, the lack of knowledge I had with women's wrestling at the time, you know, and, and the, like he always says, and it makes a lot of sense, so if, if we really believe in the, at the thing, the characteristics that wrestling and, and they, what they grow with us, or they help us grow into the person, people we are, with the, the work ethic, the dedication, uh, everything like that. If we really believe in that, why do you want to limit it to one gender? You know, we need strong people in this country. You know, and, um, if we can have men and women, it doesn't matter. We need strong people in this country to help lead this place. So, you know, we're now where I, he's definitely all in, and I'm definitely beside him, helping where I can. Anything else for us? No, I, I'm just honored to have these guys here, and it's a, it's great to have the energy around here with, uh, you know, some of the top uh, women out here and some of the, the young girls that are aspiring to be the our top people someday, and um, it's it's good to, to have it out here for, for our guys. I know that, and even for myself, it just it brings another, it brings some more energy in here, and then it kind of gets you thinking about what you got coming up this season and. Um, it's great to have him here.